Let us pray. Benevolent God, you are the source, the guide, and the goal of our lives. Teach us to love what is worth loving, and to reject what is offensive to you, and to treasure what is precious in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbiter over you? And then he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is the last Sunday in July. Where did the month go? Oh my golly, so busy doing things. Well, today's Gospel message is one that I think uh, will bother some people. It may not bother everyone, but it certainly will bother some people. It begins with a with a question, um, teacher told my brothers to divide the family inheritance with me, and Jesus says to a friend who set me as a judge or arbiter over you, Jesus asks a question, one who is ultimately the eternal judge for all of our lives. And curiously, he answers it that way in his ministry. But he warns them to take care, be on your guard against all kinds of grief, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. You could probably stop there and that would be fine. That's all Jesus really needs to say. But then he tells a parable about a rich man who finds himself even richer because his, uh, his vineyard and his granaries uh, continue to produce. And he thinks to himself, you know what, I can't keep everything that I'm accumulating. How terrible. Do some of you out there have that problem? I mean, uh, you know, you get richer every day and, and you don't know what to do with that. Well, this rich man here says, I will tear down my barns and build larger ones, and I will store all my grain and goods. Sounds okay so far, right? He's rich, he finds himself richer, he'll build up more places where his grain and his, uh, his grapes can probably be held, and uh, that's fine. It's where he goes afterwards that becomes a problem. For he says, I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up to you for many years, Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. Well, who can see what happens next? Who can guess? Who can guess? We, uh, we are Americans, and we Americans think that if having something is good, having more of it's even better. If you can get a scoop of ice cream, and uh, they're offering two scoops for the price of one, oh yes, please, please double down on that ice cream. And it is that way about a lot of things, you know? We don't... It's nice to be successful, but some people are really, really successful. You know, um, between social media and some of the technological booms in the last 20 years, some people have become incredibly wealthy. And uh, I can tell you, I don't know what people do with their money after a certain point, because you can't spend it on yourself anymore. And so what you end up doing is only accumulating more money because that's the only thing you know how to do. I mean, you can only go on a roller coaster so many times or eat so many ice creams or, you know, have a closet that's so large. Um, and so they reinvest and so they become even more wealthy. Well, the foolish part of it, of it is, is what do you do with your wealth? Are you a blessing to others or are you just going to continue to accumulate? There are some people who, Save up for a rainy day. That's a good thing. If you can do it, it's a good thing. Many of you right now are, are suffering because of inflation and probably the results of uh, COVID-19 and some other things that are going on in our country. 
Uh, maybe you haven't saved much at all. Maybe you've gone through your savings. Maybe that rainy day is now. So uh, God bless you. I hope, uh, hope you're able to continue to, to do those things that need to be done and to protect your, your loved ones. But some people just store up for a rainy day. And uh, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes maybe you must think there's going to be an absolute terrible deluge. I mean, maybe of uh, epic proportions, kind of like with Noah's Ark. Um, because you've stored up so many good things. Maybe none of you who are watching this is that rich, or maybe none of you think you are. Um, but at some point, telling yourself you're secure because of your wealth just doesn't hold any water. I can, I can take you to some of, our, some of our funeral homes, and I can show you rich people who right now are not enjoying their wealth. I can take you to a hospital and show people who are in intensive care, who may have accumulated a lot of wealth, but right now it's not helping them very much, is it? I can take you to a veteran's hospital or to a psychiatric ward and show you people who don't even understand that they're wealthy. It's not even in their mind anymore. Even though their bank books are, are loaded, even though they have property and, and possessions beyond measure, it just doesn't mean anything to them. This the scripture that I show you today is really about security. The rich man thought if he, could, if he could accumulate more, he'd be more secure, he'd be safer. And the truth is, there's only safety in your, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It really, you know, the rest of it is nice. I'm not telling you not to get insurance for your house or for your car, but, but our real insurance is Jesus Christ and our faith in him. I think there are a lot of people who think accumulating things is a good idea. I would encourage you to, to try not to accumulate everything you can. I would encourage you to, to perhaps follow a path of, of uh, giving away things that you no longer need or perhaps that other people do need. Uh, in my family, my father taught me that uh, as he was uh, reaching his late 80s and 90s, it was good for him to give away part of his wealth on a regular basis to his children, so that as he said, when I die, you just have to divide the house. There won't be anything else left to divide. And he worked very hard to do that. You can do that. There, I talk to a financial advisor if you have money, but there are ways that you can begin to kind of wind down your, your, uh, your possessions as you move forward. Not that you frighten anyone, that the people think you're dying, but, but just not to have so much, not to have so much, especially if other people need it, if other people deserve it. There are a lot of things that, that could take our care and that really need our attention in this world. Accumulating wealth is probably dangerous, even if it is at times helpful. There are some very, very rich benefactors who keep our church on their, on their agenda, and we, we thank them that they're able to continue to benefit us. But I'm hoping all of them also recognize how, how their gifts benefit others as they, as they give to our ministry. Consider your wealth. Consider what you have and what you think you have, and consider the needs of others. Christ would have us do that. Let us not have too much or save too much, but let us be generous with all that we have and trust in Jesus. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us pray with confidence. O oh God, where there is division in your church, bring reconciliation and healing. Guide the work of teachers and all who provide instruction for the building up of your church. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, where creation cries out in distress, bring relief and renewal. Bless farmers, ranchers, distributors, and all who provide our food. Nourish the land and all of its inhabitants. Merciful God, Hear our prayer. O God, where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring justice. Strengthen those who toil for the welfare of others and provide for the healing of the nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God, where your people suffer, bring healing and wholeness. We pray for all who grieve and all who are victims of violence. We especially pray for everyone on our prayer list 
and all those whose names we hold in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, where scarcity and anxiety pervade your church, bring abundance and vitality. Guide the work of church councils and committees, and give them clarity for the work of ministry in this place. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, we give you thanks for all your saints. Inspire us by their example of faithful living to set our minds on things above and help us to truly love our neighbors. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.